Hey everybody and welcome back to the Mind Catchers channel. Today I'm going to be playing around with the Warrior 2 palette once again. Um, a few people were like, oh I just bought that palette and I want to see another look using that palette. So that's what we're doing today and we're just going to pray. We're going to start out with prayer that this look turns out okay because me and Matt really don't have a good time all the time, you know, and this whole palette is nothing but mattes. I usually like to have one shimmer shade on my lid but we have nothing but matte, so we're gonna see how this goes. We're gonna start off with our e.l.f. eyeshadow primer or any primer of your choice. And have you guys finished your Christmas shopping? I'm glad to say that I'm just about done. All right, as a base, I'm going to put on this. Uh, this is from NYX, this is their skin tone base, and I'm just gonna use a profusion brush and apply this. So all of those earthy tones show up nice on my dark skin. Now I'm just applying a little tape here on my outer corners just to give myself a little guideline. This is um, a great way to do your wink liner too. I'm going to start off with this shade Yodit. Um, this is a lighter brown here. I'm just going to dust that across my lid. And remember, we have that sticky base down there, so you may have to just pat it on like I'm doing. The next shade I'm going to apply is this Kufuru right here, a little deeper brown. And you do see the shade difference here. It is much deeper than the first shade, so I'm liking that. Start giving your eye a little definition. And you're just applying that a little bit lower than that lighter brown. I'm using a Sigma Small Tapered Blending Brush, the E45. All right, ladies, we're gonna try to get this eye the exact same as this eye. Uh, with this Sigma E45, yeah, blending brush, it's tapered, that means it's pointed towards the tip. It's still very fluffy, but it has more of a pointed tip, so you can really get it in the cracks and crevices you need to get it into. I'm going to dip it into the Kufuru, that dark brown. I'm tapping it in the outer corner here, build up that color. You're gonna keep it a little bit lower than the lighter brown you had up there. A little bit lower. And we're just brushing it inward, fading it, because as it moves into the inner corner of the eye, it's gonna leave that dark deposit on the outside and fade going towards the inside. So that's what you wanna see, a nice gradient effect. And notice how I'm kinda keeping my brush on the side, not pointing yet, just keeping it on the side, brushing it. All of your color concentrated out here and brush. Now as I move towards the inner parts of the eye, I'm more, I'm using my point a little bit more. And that's to keep the color below the first brown. And we're working it into the inner corner. I really like this brush because it has a lot of control. And people who tell you that the tools that you use really don't matter, their line, it, it does matter what you're using to apply the makeup. And it also matters the pressure in which you apply. Because sometimes you're pressing on your eye too much. It's supposed to be more of a light-handed uh, application. And I'm guilty of pressing a little too hard, but if you can try to practice not pressing your brushes too hard and just lightly stroke the eyes, you'd be very surprised at how blended your eyeshadows will look. Now, if you feel like you went a little bit too high with that dark brown, go back into your lighter brown shade, the other brush, and put that back very lightly. Go around that outer corner, you will see it. Just flick around there. 
very lightly and bring it back. All right, ladies, we're gonna move into the black inside of the palette. It's very nice, dark black. It's called Shawada. I'm using the Sigma Buff and Blend Brush. This is the E39, little short, fluffy brush, but it's gonna help me stay in that outer corner very, very well. So I'm gonna tap right in the lower. You see I'm way down here. You're gonna keep that black low, very low. And you're gonna slowly and carefully brush it into your lash line. You're even taking it to the bottom lash line right there. Remember, black is the color that I say gets out of hand very, very quickly. So be very careful. You're keeping it low. You're concentrating all of that color, all of that pigmentation in that very outer corner. And once you get rid of most of it on your brush, then you sweep it right here. You're not going deep into the eye area, you're just right here in the outer corner. You could even turn your brush upward and lightly brush right here. Right here in this V, there's a V right here. You're staying right in that area. You don't wanna take the browns away. You still wanna see the browns. That's why I'm telling you, be very careful keeping it low. If you brush away those browns, you're, you know, it defeats the purpose. Now you have like a black smoky eye. You wanted to see some of those browns, so you keep it low. All right, guys, we're back. Before I do anything else, let me go ahead and put a little bit of eyeliner in my waterline. And also while I'm looking for the eyeliner, I just want you guys to know we're gonna be using LA Colors Dramata Lash. This is Diva in the style 976. Very pretty lashes. We're gonna be using those today. All right guys, before I move on any further, I'm gonna be using my Makeup Forever pencil. Just in case we make any mistakes or anything, we're gonna do this now. Uh, I like this pencil because this is waterproof, smudge proof. If you guys been following me for a long time, you know I've been wearing these little pencils out. They have them in lots of colors. This one is M10, it's a matte black and it does not move. So that's gonna go in your waterline. Your waterline is inside the eye, right there in the rim, right there. Now, if you're a person that can't take putting something there, try to put it on the lash line. Anything to darken up that outer corner. And I'm not taking it all the way on the inside of the eye. I'm keeping it right here in the outer corner. Now, this is optional. If you want the middle shade that I'm about to put on, kind of like a creamy color, if you really want that to pop and show up, you might want to put a little bit more base in the middle of the eye. If not, you could just put the white shade right there. I'm quite sure it'll look beautiful, but I'm going to add just a little bit more of this base. Okay, just about that much. It doesn't even have to go up to my crease. All right, guys, so I'm going to go into the shade Zazz, and it's the lightest shade inside of the palette. Let's see what it looks like on the lid. We're just gonna press it on. Very pretty. Now we can't leave it like that, guys. We're gonna blend around it, so we go back through those shades. Let's go to Kufuru, which is that dark, dark brown. We're gonna have to blend around it very carefully. That's where the tip of this brush comes in. All of my hooded eye people, you might have to stretch those eyes, lift those brows so we can get in those cracks and crevices. And then I'm going around the front of the eye again with some more of that brown and some more of the light brown, very lightly. All right, ladies, I'm gonna go ahead and apply this lash. Um, if you want, you can look at my lash application video. I have one here, right here on Patreon, where you can see what I do 
with my brush on adhesive. And for me having these hooded eyes, it works out very well. So check that out. Guys, I'm going to use some of the CoverGirl Lash Primer. You can use any primer you have. It's gonna make your lashes white first and then you follow up with a mascara of your choice. Now guys, when I feel like I glopped a little bit too much on, I usually take a little spoolie and even it out a little bit. But these lash primers really do work. Everyone I've tried from just about every company has worked pretty well. So if you're a person that cannot put on lashes or lashes irritate you, this is another option to really pull out your mascara and pull out those lashes, make them look a lot thicker and longer. Get you a primer and work with what you got. Now I usually let my primer sit until I finish my face and then I put on the mascara last. All right, so let's go on to the face. We're gonna remove our tape and see that nice crisp line. Look at that. Oh, cut them, cut them, cut them. Cover Girl Primer. This one is the Pore Minimizing Primer. We're gonna put that all over. Because the foundation we're putting on, the NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop, is very, very mattifying, so I don't need to really put on a mattifying primer this time. You guys know my favorite primer was always the, um, and still is, for other foundations, the Becca. This stuff here is amazing. I put it in my T-zone all around my nose. This is your T-zone right here, the forehead, down the nose, the cheeks. Sometimes even my chin right here gets a little oily. This works very well. Put it on, wait about 30 seconds, and then put on your foundation. That's from uh, Becca. But this foundation does it all for me in one shot. So didn't need to apply that and it's full coverage. It's awesome. Love it. All right, guys, so I'm going to be applying the NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop foundation in the shade Coco. Shake it up a little bit. Almost out of this. This is 15 bucks. So very affordable. Try it out. I'm going to be using my Sigma Flat Kabuki brush to apply this. And this is the F80. And guys, with this foundation, I usually start off in my worst areas first, those areas that I have the most discoloration. I usually start there first because this stuff is mattifying. You gotta move fast, it starts drying. It doesn't really have that cakey buildup if you do wanna reapply and put more somewhere. It doesn't do that, but it is best to work on those bad areas first and then see where you are and then you could just tap and put it where you need it again, you know? because it, it, it will cover, it has some great coverage. And you might find that you don't need to put it all over your face twice. You might just need to spot check. All right guys, I'm gonna be using the Naked Skin uh, Concealer. This one is in Dark Warm, I believe. I'm gonna try this one out. The concealers are very creamy and they usually blend into every foundation very well, so. I don't have any complaints about the Urban Decay Naked Skin. Um, they also have the, uh, what's the other one? The All Nighter. I wasn't too much of a fan of that one. I asked, actually, I don't even think I did a review on the All Nighter. I do have it, but I, I don't think I did. After I tried it out, I think it was just too stiff for under my eyes. I do get creasing under my eyes if something is a little too hard, too stiff. Um, not too blendable. Some people can get away with that. I heard the shape tape was pretty thick like that. But um, I don't have much luck with uh, concealers like that under the eye, so I left that one alone. I'm gonna put some down my nose. A little bit on my forehead. I don't have much of a forehead, but like to emphasize the little bit of a forehead that I do have. Give me a little brightness right here in this area. Kind of draw attention to my eyes. 
I think when you do a little highlight right up in here, like going around the mouth, right in this area, just highlight in the center of the face, it really brings attention like to the best qualities of your makeup, best qualities of the face, especially if you work really hard on your eyes. Highlighting brings everything forward and contouring kind of hides or take those areas back. So we want to bring these areas forward. I'm going to lightly use the new powder that I got in the Boxy Charm, which was the Pretty Vulgar um, Translucent Powder. And it turned out very, very nice. I'm gonna use that today. Today I'm gonna to be using my Sonia Kashuk. This is supposed to be a blending brush, but I like it for all of that little stuff, little areas I get in there with this. And I'm tapping that powder on. And it really isn't bad on darker skin. It really is not. Sometimes you put on translucent powders that are obviously not translucent and they make you look ghostly. I also noticed that I don't really get any flashback with this. So liking it, liking it a lot. All right, we're gonna go into the Sasha Cosmetics Matte Brown. This is supposed to be a blush. It's a very, very dark blush if they're using it for blush. But anyway, I like to use it as a contour. So if you're a darker skin tone, you're looking for a nice, dark, deep contour, you may wanna go with this, it's matte brown. And I just start out here. All right, guys, gonna apply a little bit of bronzer here. This is Maui Nights by uh, Becca Cosmetics. And I kind of use this as a blush, too. It gives a little bit of color to my cheeks. So I kind of blend it in with my contour a bit. I'll spray my face with a little bit of Fix Plus. Now I'm getting ready to apply my mascara over that primer. I'm getting ready to use uh, Oh My How High Lengthening Mascara. This is from Butter London. I think I got this in a boxy charm. It's pretty good. I'm gonna get a piece of tissue and protect my under eye because I am prone to mistakes. And y'all see what happened when I let my guard down? That's what I'm talking about. It's always a mistake somewhere. Well, let's clean that off. All right, I can use a little bit of highlight. Uh, this is from Black Radiance. Yeah, this is their contour kit. This is in the shade medium to dark. All right, so I'm going to use the highlighter there. And for that, I'm using the tapered highlighter, the F35. And I'm keeping my highlight right at the top of my cheekbones, right there. You can do your face like this, or you're going above the contour. And some people put a little bit right there on the bridge of the nose, try to make that area pop a little bit. Some people put a little on the forehead and make that area pop a bit. Or on the chin. And some ladies put some on the cupid's bow right here. On the top of the lip to make that area pop when they put on lipstick. So all of that is just to make this area really come forward. All right, I just cleaned off my lips a little bit. We're going to go in with Palladio's Lip Pencil in the shade 
coffee. All right, ladies, sometimes you see people put a little bit of liner right there in the center. They say that's supposed to make your lips look a little fuller. If you already have full lips, I kind of do. Then don't worry about it, but just something to do. Try it out. Might make your lips look more voluptuous. I've also been kind of outlining my lips a little farther out. I've been going up here. And normally I kind of keep my pencil inside the lip. And for a lip today, we're going to uh, use the NYX Love Out Loud. This is in the shade, I want to say LOL. Yeah, L LOL. Like a pinky nude. Let's see what this looks like. I, I don't think I ever put this. I might have used it. Let's see. I think I want to put a little bit of Palladio's nude shade on top of this just to see. I don't know if I like it so pinky. Do I like it better? Okay, I like it a lot better that way. I don't know. I, I think I like more corally nudes or like more of a coral or orange undertone. All right, guys, and this time today, I can actually say that I'm going to take my own hair out and come back with a completed look instead of going to go find hair and put it on because somebody thought that was so funny in the last video. I didn't even think anything of it, but it was telling the truth. That's what I do. I go and find a wig or something and throw it on. But today, I actually braided my hair. Well, actually, I washed, blow dried, and braided my hair. So let's see what that turns out like. I'll be right back. All right guys, so here is your completed look with the hair and everything. And I like it, but I love vampy lipsticks. So I'm gonna change my lips to a very vampy shade that I love. Uh, this one is from Maybelline and it's called slay it number 82 you see how dark that is oh love it let's see can i have a honey bun mm-hmm he not talking about my honey bun <laughs> i take yours if you give me yours mm -mm. Now, please, what I got to do to get this? We're supposed to be eating right, guys, and he's... I, I'm not fooling with him. Go ahead. Enjoy yourself. Knock yourself out. All right, guys, so I'm applying the Vivid Hot Lacquer. I did a review on these, and I swatched all of them. Oh, my. They're gorgeous, and they stay shiny. All right, guys, so there we go. Very pretty. Loving that. Again, that shade is called Slay It, number 82. That's a vivid hot lacquer, and that is from, and it's on my teeth. That is from Maybelline. Beautiful. You got to be careful with them because they will transfer a bit through the finger thing. Get them away from your teeth, because you see? But they're so pretty. All right, guys, so that is your look using the Warrior 2 by Juvia's Place. This time I stuck with the palette and didn't go outside of this palette. So very, very nice. I do have now a matte look I can wear. Of course, you can do a neutral shade. You can do an all-over shade, like... um what is this? Uh, Kafuru, Jamata. These are all over shades. You can do nice smoky eyes with those. Very nice. So um, it's a beautiful palette. That black is just awesome. Love it. 
it is so pigmented i mean like look at that that is crazy uh let me know if you try this look or you have some colors that are kind of like this all you need is like a two a light brown a dark brown a black and kind of like a whitish color or a cream color you can do this uh, you notice I didn't put any wing this time. That's what the tape was for. It gives you the illusion that you're wearing a wing, but you're really not. So for those of us who are still struggling with the wing, I do have a wing tutorial. But if you still are struggling after the wing tutorial, try this technique out. It might help you out, all right? So I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Cyber kisses. Bye.